So drugs for acute muscle spasm. So there are many drugs okay, that are used for the treatment of acute spasm resulting from muscle injury. And most of these drugs are sedatives, okay, causes sedation, okay, or they act in the brain stem. So these drugs are cyclobenzaprine, methocarbamol, and orphanarine, okay. I think orphanarine is the most um, well-known drug okay, in this, among these three, okay. Not sure about how frequently are these two used. I've never seen people using it, but often the brain is um, commonly used, especially in um, the psychiatry department. And none of these drugs for acute spasm are effective in muscle spasm resulting from cerebral palsy or spinal cord injury. Okay, so these drugs are not. Um, not effective. Okay, they are not effective for muscle spasm. That is caused by cerebral palsy or spinal cord injury. So these are not the drugs that are you use for patients with spasm in cerebral palsy or injury to the spinal cord, okay, due to an accident or whatsoever. So second category is the drugs for chronic muscle spasm. So they act in the central nervous system or on the skeletal muscle cell rather than at the neuromuscular end plate. Okay, so these drugs act on the skeletal muscle cell, okay, directly. Skeletal muscle cell and not at the neuromuscular end plate. Okay. So these drugs include um, diazepam, okay, baclofen. Tizanidine, okay. So diazepam is a benzodiazepine, okay, a benzodiazepine. A drug that, okay, this group of drugs were commonly abused previously, okay, and of course they are still abused to this day, okay. And this drug um, facilitates GABA, gamma amino butyric acid mediated presynaptic inhibition okay baclofen is a GABA agonist causing membrane hyperpolarization okay hyperpolarization because um we have when we hyperpolarize usually um in this case it's potassium going out okay so we increase the potassium conductance so there is a lot of potassium inside the cell it goes out goes out okay causing hyperpolarization it becomes more negative okay becomes more negative as opposed to depolarization depolarization which makes it more positive okay the memory potential so this reduces the release of excitatory neurotransmitters okay so when we have hyperpolarization that reduces the release of excitatory neurotransmitters, including substance P. So tizanidine is a congener of clonidine, okay, has significant alpha-2 agonist activity and reinforces both presynaptic and postsynaptic inhibition in the cord. Okay, so it causes basically inhibition, okay inhibition of the synapse in the cord. So when you have inhibition of the synapse in the cord, okay, so you can have um, transmission of impulse. So you will, um, that will cause reduction in the muscle spasm, okay. And all these three drugs, diazepam, baclofen, isanidine, they act in the spinal cord and reduce the tonic output of the primary spinal motor neurons, okay? So reduces the tonic output, okay? So if you reduce the tonic output, okay, that will reduce the spasm. So 
just a quick recap, stretch receptor muscle, muscle spindle, okay? So we have some drugs, okay? Acting in the CNS or on the skeletal muscle cell, okay? So a skeletal muscle cell, okay? The next drug is dantrolene, okay? Dantrolene is an agent that acts on the sarcoplasmic reticulum of the skeletal muscle, okay? So, sarcoplasmic reticulum. Okay, sarcoplasmic reticulum on the skeletal muscle. Okay. Sarcoplasmic reticulum of the skeletal muscle. So, it reduces the release of activated calcium. Okay, release, reduces the release of activated calcium via interaction with the rhyonodin receptor channel. Okay. So it reduces the release of calcium, okay? Reduces the release of calcium. So because we have, when you have more calcium, of course you have more contraction, more spasm, more pain, okay? More pain. So you want to reduce the release of calcium, okay? Via action with the rhyonodine, okay? Rhyonodine receptor channel. And then we have the cardiac and smooth muscle um, that are affected, but very minimally. So no worries, no, no need to worry about the effects on the cardiac and smooth muscle, okay? It's because it's minimally um, affected, minimally suppressed. So dentroline is also effective in the treatment of malignant hyperthermia, okay? Malignant hyperthermia is a, a condition whereby you have excessive okay you have a lot of calcium being released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum of the skeletal muscle okay so when you have so much calcium going out okay from the skeletal muscle okay that will cause malignant hyper a condition called malignant hyperthermia okay malignant hyperthermia is a is a it's a medical emergency okay it's a medical emergency that needs to be treated um, by supportive measures, okay? Supportive measures. Just like when you, just like how we treat dengue fever, okay? And this is a condition that is rare, but can be triggered by um, saxamethonium and also tubocurarine, okay? So saxamethonium, if you still remember, is um, a depolarizing neuromuscular blocker, whereas, whereas Tubocurine is a non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocker. And this drug is given intravenously okay, to block calcium release. Okay? So you want to give um, dentroline and then you hopefully will cause reduction in the release of calcium. Okay? Reduction in the release of calcium. calcium okay, again another another illustration showing the sarcoplasmic reticulum and then calcium moving out okay calcium moving out so if you give dentroline you hopefully you will um, reduce the re amount of calcium that goes out because if you have excessive calcium coming out here you have you will have a condition called malignant hyperthermia malignant means dangerous okay usually related to death okay hyperthermia is increasing your temperature so um so this is a brand of uh, dantrolene okay remember dantrolene sodium so that's a drug dantrolene sodium this is a brand forget about the brand okay remember the drug dantrolene sodium okay and so this is a drug that can be used to treat malignant hyperthermia okay malignant hyperthermia and the dose rec recommended is 2.5 milligrams per kg okay so for example a patient who has who is um 20 kilograms for example okay so 20 kilograms how much do you need okay think about that how much does he need if he's 50 kilograms how much does he need if it's if he's 70 kilograms okay so think about that how much does the patient need okay 
So you don't have to remember the dosage, of course, um, because it, this is a very rare condition, but you have to remember the name of the drug, pentoline sodium, okay? Next is we have botulinum toxin. Um, intramuscular injection may reduce pain caused by severe spasm, okay? So if you give intramuscular injection of botulinum toxin, it may reduce the pain. And we can, this, um, the usage is in more generalized spastic disorders, for example, cerebral palsy, okay? And then the other drug that we can use is gabapentin. It's effective in spasm due to multiple sclerosis, okay? Multiple sclerosis, okay? A neurological condition, okay? That is devastating for the patients. Um, this is taken from CATZOOM, okay? CATZOOM, um, basic and clinical pharmacology. So you are uh, highly recommended to read um, and look, look up for this diagram in CATZOOM, okay? So you have the inhibitory interneuron, corticospinal pathway, motor neuron, okay, you have the muscle. So which must which drug X here? Okay. Which drug X here? And then which drug X on the alpha 2? And then which drug X here on the receptor? And which one X here? Okay, and GABA B. So try to read up on this. Okay. So in a nutshell, uh, we have. So this is um, we have been talking about the drugs that are used um, to treat um, skeletal muscle conditions or drugs that are used to um, relax the skeletal muscle. So we have neuromuscular blockers, okay, and also spasmolytics, okay, spasmolytics. So neuromuscular blockers, um, we have non-depolarizing and depolarizing, okay, and then there are various ways of categorizing or classifying non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. Okay, there are many ways. Okay, but mainly we like to look at the, how the duration of action of the drug, okay, besides its um, onset of action. And then the spasmolytics, we have the ones that are used for acute use, mainly often in ring. And then the ones that are used for chronic treatment of spasm. Okay. And for this one, we have two categories. The ones acting at the CNS, central nervous system, such as diazepam, um, baclofen, and tizanidine. And then the drugs that are used for, that, are, that act directly on the muscle, okay? causing reduction in calcium release. So mainly this is um, the drug that is for this condition is dentrolene sodium, okay, dentrolene. Okay, that's all for now. Um, see you people in the next videos. Thank you.